in Singapore and I'm here with Shaheen Majid from uh, Sabinsa. Um, Shaheen, what, what are some of the trends that we see happening within the nutraceutical space and where do you see real opportunities? Well, Robin, thanks for having me. So one of the biggest uh, trends that's happening is on curcumin. And here at the uh, Vita Foods Asia show, we are the official curcumin sponsor. Our brand is called Curcumin C3 Complex. The brand itself has over 80 clinical studies, and I think what we've seen over the number of years is how curcumin has gone from an antioxidant to anti-inflammatory, and now we're talking about things like diabetes, cardiovascular health, blood sugar support, so curcumin has really evolved, and I think that evolution of curcumin is taking its ongoing trend forward and continuous momentum with curcumin being in the marketplace continuously. Are it's there a kind great of place to be. Are there unexplored kind of application areas? where we, I, we believe so. I mean, if you spoke to me a couple of years ago about cardiovascular health, ooh, no way. I mean, curcumin in that space was totally not looked into or researched. But as we progress some of the research, some of the universities and research centers, they're taking it way beyond what we knew about inflammation. We know it's critical on inflammation, but what else can curcumin do? And I think that's being explored heavily today. Curcumin is a pretty mainstream ingredient, or at least it's becoming more mainstream. What about some of the, the emerging ones? What, what kind of botanicals should we be looking out for? So a lot of the, uh, the botanicals in the cognition area is coming to light. You have um, eye care segments, so things like lutein, zeaxanthine, uh, they're getting a tremendous value. Um, back to cognition, things like bacopa and even ashwagandha on the herbal side, they're being looked at very closely. And there's a lot of development on the research side happening to them. I mean, mind you, you can take ashwagandha and bacopa back maybe 20 years ago, and they were antioxidants. But today, you're seeing cognitive clinical studies coming out, which is fantastic. We're here at Vitafus Asia. So are there specific trends that you see maybe in Asian markets that are maybe less developed or, or significantly different in Europe and the US? So, you know, we're, we're, we're finding something very interesting. When you look at the US, uh, at least from Sabinsa's perspective and kind of a general US industry's perspective, you find probiotics to be abundantly superior there. You find a number of ingredients, number of products rather, that have probiotics. Uh, but interestingly, Asia looks at probiotics quite differently and they haven't progressed to the level that I've at least seen in the US. But it's coming up. So probiotics here is a big conversation piece. Uh, we weren't so sure when we came out here if that would be a big trend because we weren't, we weren't getting a lot of customer inquiries. But at the show, I can tell you, it's a major interest. And we just finished up giving a talk at the uh, International Probiotics Association here. So probiotics is a big trend. Um, sports nutrition is another big trend. And I have to give a little bit of a disclaimer here because in the U.S., we no longer say, hey, I'm trying to lose weight. In the U.S., we say, I'm going to go work out. And that all falls into a sports condition, sports nutrition category. And that's starting to be relevant here uh, for Asia. Okay. So I guess maybe a different way of, of weight management, maybe one, one of the platforms to exploit, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I, I guess it's a much more comfortable conversation that people can have between each other, saying, hey, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to work out. And, and that seems to be a normal conversation now rather than saying, hey, Robin, I want to lose some weight. We're, we're not having that discussion, right? <laughs> Fair enough, Shay. Thank you very much. Hey, man.